Good day to everyone. A very important and timely message for each and every one of us, especially during these trying times. And it is as if we are struggling for so many days, so many months, and it is as if there's no answers to all these problems that we're facing. Now, we will have a short series on prayer. And the focus of our message is on the blessings of prayer. But as a way of introduction in this important subject for today, let me say, I know everyone prays, everyone calls upon the Lord, everyone who claims to be a believer of Christ, a Christian, a child of God, would come to Him to lift up the burden of the soul, you know, the burden of life. But hear me out. Not everyone gets the full blessings of prayer. Not everyone gets the full benefit. We need to be part of His family. The first thing that we need to, the reasons why, why our prayers are being hindered or not having the blessings is because we are not part of His family. The principle is simple. God only blesses those who are His, those who belong to Him. Why will God answer our prayers if we are not His children, if we are not part of His family? Now, if you want to be blessed, brothers, sisters, we need to be properly related to Him. But the question is, how do I become part of His family? Well, we will talk about that later in our future topics, but let me just give you a hint. And the key here is Jesus. Word of God says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But the second reason why there is what we call the hindrance or we don't have the full blessing of prayer is the lack of faith, real faith in God. When I say real faith or faith, it is not just the presumptuous kind of faith. For many would assume, many would assume they have faith, but in reality, it would always fall short of God's demand for authentic and unadulterated kind of faith. Let me repeat that. Authentic and unadulterated kind of faith. James 1, 6 through 8 says, But let him ask in faith, with no doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the lord he is a double-minded man unstable in all his ways friends when we lack faith it only shows that we are double-minded and we are unstable in all our ways a person that lacks that will not receive the blessing of prayer. But this brings me to the third reason, and that is the inability to pray according to His will. The believer doesn't have the confidence in prayer because the will of God is not his priority. For real faith, hear me out, for real faith will always pursue and prioritize the will of God more than anything in prayer. In 1 John, the author makes it very clear that the strongest you know, consideration in our prayer must be the will of God. If you will turn your Bibles to 1 uh, John 5.14, Word of God says, And this is the confidence that we have toward Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. If I follow what this particular verse is saying, the reason it does not listen to our prayers is simple. Our prayers is not in line with His specific will in our lives. Remember the prayer that Christ taught the disciples. He says there, it says there, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. His will is our safety net. In prayer, this should be the compelling reason why we pray. 
We want to know the will of God. We want to do the will of God more than anything else. Look at what the Word of God says in the book of Psalm. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37 verse 4. That is the key. If we continue to a point in delighting to know Him and to know His will, we are able to do the right thing and be led to understand what prayer is all about. I would like to say this, and I will say this again toward the end of our series on prayer. I hope I still remember. My thoughts is, the greatest blessing of prayer is not what we get from it, but by what we become by it. Actually, there are more reasons why prayers fail, but these two or three reasons, the lack of faith, the inability to know His will, and we are not properly related to Him, are fundamental grounds for prayer to fail. And I hope we consider strongly the rational of these reasons. Now let me just say, as we continue, prayer is always meant to be a blessing. This could probably be the reason why Paul encouraged the church in Thessalonica to pray always. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, it's a short verse, pray without ceasing. Meaning, pray without stopping, pray continually, pray unceasingly. Now let me say this, we pray because prayer works. Prayer works at all times. And you know what? All the people that I know, when I ask them if prayer works for them, I would always hear this resounding answer. Yes, it does. Prayer always works. According to Precept Austin commentary, one illustration was given. Out of approximately 667 recorded prayers in the Bible, there are about 454 recorded answers. This should encourage us. This should motivate us to pray without ceasing. Now let me talk about the trilogy of the passage. This prayer, this, this verse uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 is part of a trilogy. Verse 16 and verse 18 should be included. It says, Rejoice always, pray always, give thanks always. Now we could see that after Paul said to rejoice always in verse 16, he followed it up with a staggering statement to pray without ceasing. To pray always rejoice always pray always it is as if these two are placed together these two are put together and they are inseparable it is as if paul is saying if you want to rejoice always you need to pray at all times and i like what spurgeon said one time the more praying the more rejoicing friends Hear me out. Prayer gives great comfort to the sorrowful soul. Sorrows gone, sorrows flow away, and the stream of endless joy is being experienced when the person is in the presence of the Almighty God. The reality is the presence of the Lord, the presence of God is more than enough. It far outweighs the answers to our prayers. As the song says, if answers aren't enough, there is Jesus. Now we will discover that after we rejoice in verse 16 and through unceasing prayer in verse 17, what follows next is astonishing. The word says in verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. 
you will observe Paul and the Word of God encourages us to always give Him thanks in all circumstances through thick and thin. I remember what he said in Romans 8.28, All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Because even in the seemingly negative circumstance of life, there would come what we call positive things or great things because the hand of God is with us. I remember what Joseph said in the Old Testament, they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. If you are suffering now, if you have difficulties right now, don't grow weary, don't lose hope, because God has a deeper purpose. What you need to do is to rejoice, to pray always, and to give Him thanks, even if in times it's hard to do. And you will realize and you will see God, how God would work in your circumstances. After giving some foundations, fundamental truths, establishing the right perspective in prayer, next time we will talk about the three blessings of prayer. Thank you for listening and God bless you all.